whether you live in an apartment with a tiny veranda with enough room for two buckets or whether you are in an area like this with a quarter acre section which is a thousand square meters you can still grow your own plant material for flower arranging this is whether you're a florist or whether it is a hobby the reason you want to do this is it's going to cut your costs give you more variety and you're going to be able to grab things that are easily accessible so this video is my 40 favorite plants that I grow here in the Floral Design Magazine garden that I consider essential for me to have around me at any time for when I have to do an emergency arrangement or for an order. So come with me through the garden and I'll show you the plants plus how I use them. It will give you ideas for what you can also grow whether you're in a temperate climate like we are or whether you have snow for half the year. It is still possible to grow many of these plants and foliage. New Zealand flax. I consider this an essential. It can be hard to grow in the Northern Hemisphere, but you can grow it in a big tub. Put wheels on a trolley on the bottom of it as some permanent sort of a feature, and you can wheel it into a really sheltered spot for the winter if you have snow. You could even wheel it inside. It is an incredibly valuable plant. You cut it from the base in a particular way. Flax grows as a series of splayed blades. Never ever cut these inside ones because that's where the plant is still growing from. You only ever cut these outside ones, which are the old ones, or otherwise you're actually going to kill your flax plant. This part here doesn't get cut until that has grown onto the outside. You come up to the part where it's very, very thick and cut it on an angle with a sharp secateur or a knife and that's how you cut your flax blade. There are two main types of New Zealand flax. One that grows upright. You see these, all these spears are pointing straight up. Those are Formium tenex and it's hybrids. Other ones are called cookium and they flip over. So when you pick the flax you want to grow, decide do you want them because you want it for beautiful upright line material or do you want it floppy so you can roll it. This one, if you only can room for one, will do both. You bend it this way and it will call, have the most beautiful curves on it. Split it with your finger and you've got it like this. Cut off that hard part that's here. But even that hard part doesn't have to be wasted because that in itself becomes quite a textural thing that you can use in a flower arrangement. So you don't have to waste any of it. Now flax will last in water for three or four weeks. Out of water, the first thing that's going to happen is this is going to curl. And it's going to curl right over like this. If you're aware of that, you can actually turn that to your advantage. You can cut this and just toss it somewhere and in three or four days it will have been curled. It will also be a slightly different colour and you can use those curled sections. You can cut them up to make little flax beads. You can do all these interesting creative things with it and of course you can make the flax flowers that are so famous and will last for years and years and years. The varieties not only are different colours such as this one, but they are also different widths. Here is just a selection of the flax that I grow in this garden and pick the ones that you think are going to be versatile enough for you if you have got a small garden. As far as growing conditions, they are swamp plants. None of mine grow in a swamp. They grow in the part of the garden where they can take up this amount of room. So don't be too worried about having them with wet feet other part of the flax that is fantastic is this. This is the flax flower. In New Zealand we call it the claddy. This is probably two months old, this one. It's not fresh. It is very much like wood. And you can use it in any way that you would use balsa wood. It is very, very soft. It will take pins in there extremely easily. So you can cut it off and you can build grids. Put a pin in there, build a grid. You can use these bits, the spent parts of the flower, cut them off. These will last for a years and years and years as well. 
and there's also black seeds inside, which is another story. Black seeds glued onto um, a two-dimensional wall hanging always look very, very cool. Rosemary. You probably wouldn't think this would be on my list of 40, but it is because the smell is amazing. And this is an upright rosemary, and I formed it into a great big hedge, so I can use it for cooking as well. But not only does it go upright, it gives me these beautiful curves. This means I can use it for Hogarth, Hogarth S curves for traditional arrangements, crescents, reverse crescents, horizontals. It's so versatile. And the other good thing about it is when somebody gets an arrangement and sniffs it, they are smelling a really good smell. Rosemary will last an arrangement in water. You just take these pastel off the bottom, put it into your floral foam, it will last a good fortnight. So it is a very versatile one for not only traditional but also modern designs. And of course, rosemary in the language of flowers means remembrance. So if I'm doing a funeral arrangement, I put a little bit in here. So back to the question, have you got room? You don't need a hedge as big as this. This is really also part of building a room for our garden. But one rosemary either upright or one that goes along the ground in a bucket or at the, in the entrance to way to your house will be just enough of what you need for these emergency arrangements. And it's very hard to buy, or at least in New Zealand, from the wholesalers. Mm. Strelitzia, a bird of paradise. It's late summer, so my little bird's dying. When they, when they don't die, all these are that beautiful bright orange blue color you can take those feathers off and it still is a glorious looking piece of floral art cut it with a really really long stem and you ha and have three or four of them together and you have a fantastic modern design very stark and beautiful but the leaves are also worthwhile having because these leaves dry start them off this way with that beautiful red vein going through them there and they will go they go delightfully with any big red flower jubras roses any of the big ones um, and once again these will last for months and months take them out of water and they start to dry you can see this one is starting and they curl themselves into these beautiful glorious swirls which are fantastic for dried arrangement work the only thing for growing them they come from south africa they like the heat we don't get a lot of heat but we do get frost and they don't like it and this is actually frost damage these little bits here is because we had frosts last year if you're going to grow strelitzia in a big tub with wheels on it and bring it inside for the winter down into your basement so that it can winter over and then give you this glorious color again for summer this is one of my absolute essentials starts beautiful ends fabulous for dry you've got to have plants like this that are so versatile you can use every part of them for all the parts of the year when you need them foxtail fern it likes to grow in the shade I put it amongst the gladiolas and under the geranium because it hates the sun. Give it lots of fertilizer and these stunning spikes will grow to, up to a metre. That's a yard tall. The more you fertilize it, the, the bigger they're going to get. It grows from the bottom here and you, you cut it right down here and it will grow again. It actually grows underneath. That there is its root. That's where I've cut them all in the past. So it just keeps on growing out and out. So you don't have to worry about cutting it too much. It will grow again. Another long lasso. This is why it's one of my 40 essentials. You can put that in an arrangement and it's gonna last three weeks in either floral foam or water. The taller you want it to grow, the more fertilizer you, you add to it. Geranium, pelagonium, they both have the same effect. These are doers. These are the plants that just keep going through summer, through winter, through drought, through too much rain. And they're stiff little things. And look at the shape of that fantastic leaf. I pick them right back to here on a slant. And that is what I use for basing often my bowl arrangements. And also for my more traditional designs. Even some European styles actually, I use this for the basing, the underneath. The second cool thing about it is it smells 
like lemon this one so it is another thing that when they go they go oh yes it's got a lovely smell I never use the flowers the flowers are insignificant but these leaves these leaves are precious they're stiff they're long lasting they are can go into soil foam and water they will do anything you want to do and then better than that no it's probably not better just as good as that this is so easy to grow when I was a girl guide when I was nine this was the very very first thing I was taught to grow from a cutting this is all you do have a look at this this there it is just take a random piece cut it off here here it is take off the big leaves and put that straight into some soil potting mix and you will have roots on that within a month or two and you've got yourself a new geranium. What I do if I've picked too much and I've got too much in my bucket when I've been picking, anything that's left in my bucket I just plant in random places around the garden. So you can see it's growing behind me here. It's growing, it's growing by the letterbox. Just any random place it needs to be full I put this because it just will give me all of the, that basing material I want. The other very cool thing about it is the older ones are huge, so you've got that scale, and the younger ones are tiny, so you get that scale. Don't pick these small top ones in spring, they won't last, but these granddaddy ones that have been on the bush for a month or so, perfect. Geranium or Pelagonium, grab yourself some. Aurelia, every flower arranger's favorite. And Aurelia is a fabulous for formal linear designs because of those lovely, long, clear shapes. If, if you have your own bush, it's even better because you can take it how you want it. See how this one is going up and then the stalk's that way? This one, the stalk is going down the middle. So you can pick the stalk if you want it to be a horizontal design like this one here or if you want it to be up and down like this one here. You can pick it if you grow your own. I put mine here by the letterbox and it just I just keep cutting it back so the mailman can get into the letterbox. But there's something even better about a Aurelia. There it is in its form like this. You can flip it back this way and it will stay there. So if you want to pop that into your floral foam you can have this one as part of your basing. Flip it back up that way and it can go into the back of your design as it's facing forward. But then you can also cut these off and you've now got a really really modern leaf pattern on there that will not that will not bruise or anything so it, it, it can be it's extremely versatile I'll just pop it back that way and then you get to see all these bits another long lasting one a month I would say conservatively in floral foam which makes it perfect for corporate designs people who just want to have a couple of leaves and two great big peonies or, or gerberas this is perfect growing conditions it likes the shade it's being in the shade here most of, most of the time being sheltered and it will grow out from the shade the other thing is in late autumn you're going to get these most beautiful seed heads on it and these he seed heads also last that those lovely little green little pops of color will make a design look quite quite different and you wouldn't know that they were the seed heads from the Aurelia <laughs> Aurelia that's what this is now this is one of my top 40 but if you've only got a small space it probably isn't for you. It's off from the bamboo family. I consider this absolutely beautiful. It works if you ever want bamboo. You can cut it way down here at the base and you'll get yourself a piece that's well over six foot, two meters high. So it's fabulous whenever you want lovely long pieces for screens and things like that. You can cut these pieces off and pull these off until you end up with a bamboo shape. You can tie them up like this and suddenly you've got all these sort of top knot things happening on it. You can, as you cut them, you can cut it at the base of each one here. So you cut it there and you cut it inside here and you end up with all these lovely little top knot shapes like candles. Extremely versatile. It, it's, because it's a member of the bamboo family, it will spread. This is 10 years old and it spread maybe um, a metre, maybe a yard. So it doesn't spread very fast and that's in our time to grow anything. 
it likes it wet. So what my track, I put it somewhere that's really dry. That stops its growth. It stops its spread, but still gives me enough that I can cut them whenever I want them for any design I want that requires a screen or an enormous scale. It is very much for people who've got larger areas, because I don't think it will grow very well in a bucket, but it would definitely take over a pond. So this is my version of bamboo, not nearly as invasive. You can hear the birds in the background, they absolutely love being in this garden. Leucodendron. Leucodendron is another South African plant. What will we do without our South African plants? Look at that beautiful stem up in there. These develop into quite a bulby flower and in another month or two, when it's really autumn, that will have a little nut inside there. They grow straight up like this. You can pick them from the bottom here. Strip off what you don't want. Don't throw out those petals, those leaves. Those leaves are fabulous for layering. They will pin and they will last at least 10 days out of water, just pin. They will slowly change colour but they look very, very smart and they don't shrink. Then there it is. Good for traditional work, good for modern work. And these red stems look fantastic with red roses, red gerberas, red carnations. It's a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a bush. Ours have actually been blown over by the wind so they grow diagonally, which is quite different. But they have still survived and they are sheltered. They are in the shade, they are sheltered and very, very dry. Whenever you decide you're going to plant something and you want it to last, think about what its country of origin is and what the climate conditions are in that country and then find a spot in your garden or your bucket or against a wall that is exactly like those conditions. South Africa, hot and dry, hot and dry, and obviously protected a little. It likes dry feet but it doesn't like being dry without water, so remember to water it. So that is a lutidendum. Lots of different varieties of it and another one that will last three, four weeks in floral foam. And that's what you want to keep your customers, or if you've made a flower arrangement and it's just beautiful, you don't want it to die in a week, do you? Cornus alba, dogwood. This is the one that the Belgians love, and they love it because of this. This beautiful red bark. They very seldom use the leaves, they very seldom use the flowers. The flowers are fairly insignificant, little white tiny flowers, but that's what it is. Now this tree is only three years old, and so I have let it carry on growing, but every autumn you can cut every one of these long stems right off back down to here because this is all spring growth that's how fast it grows straight up and once this is cut next spring more will come up so you've got quite a good lot to harvest it's going to end up as a big tree if you don't if i don't cut it so it is going to be cut every single year to keep it so that i can actually cut at it it is for a bigger garden, we have to admit to that, and it won't grow in a container. But if you've got the room, look for Cornus Alba and plant two or three of them if you love these sort of designs, this beautiful Cornus Alba, and when it's lovely and green and fresh, it bends. Be soft with it, but it will bend, and that's why you can get those gorgeous bendy shapes. Aspidistra. Where would we be without Aspidistra? Now it likes complete shade in summer. It's okay in winter, so it's underneath our weeping elm. The leaves arrive and shade it all summer, and then in winter the leaves of the elm disappear, and the Aspidistra is quite happy in winter out in that much, much less intense sun. Now only grow Aspidistra if you love having snail bait around the place. So there's the Aspidistra. You can see when you grow your own, they grow beautiful wide blades. And you cut them right down to the ground, right down to here. And you cut them from the base here. And there it is, looking more familiar. Clean them up, just use a wet rag. And if you want them really, really shiny, use 
milk or vegetable oil and that will shine them up beautifully. Now if you're not familiar with the properties of Aspidistra, grow them and you'll soon discover them or get manipulating leaves one and two because they will give, tell you all about this beautiful plant. It does this, look how it curls. It can go this way, it will go into itself, it will roll, it will fold, it will last two months. When you finish with your arrangement or you get it back or you've had enough of it, take it out and just put it in a jar with no water. It will turn this beautiful, beautiful golden brown and it can have another life in a dried arrangement. All this patch started with one aspidistra plant um, 15 years ago in a bucket. Finally when we moved to the Floral Design Magazine garden I took it out of the bucket and put it here and it has spread. So it doesn't spread far. They do not like being moved. And then of course there is hydrangea. The most versatile you're ever going to find. It's particularly if you can find a white one. Now that's how it will, should look if you grew it in the shade. The commercial growers have them under cloth. That is sun damage. So got you have to have a shady position. Then have a look at this one here. This is in full sun in the afternoon. So it not only has the sun damage of all these little brown bits here, but it also starts to turn the pink. But if I show you where the sun can't get, what happens to a white hydrangea in late summer? When it's getting old, it starts to turn green. And you get this beautiful, beautiful flower in these glorious green shades. Now that flower will last for three weeks in a vase, probably two weeks in floral foam, and it, because it is an old flower, the new flowers on Hindraja will not last longer than a couple of days, they get all soft. So that's the fabulous thing about buying a white hydrangea. The key is having it in the shade. Of course hydrangea comes in pinks, it comes in blues, in all shades in between, and it's so easy to grow. Cut a piece off and say thank you very much neighbour. Cut off the flower head. Now you cut half the leaf off. The hydrangea has to have enough leaf so it can still do the whole process of chlorophyll and oxygen and that's what you plant. Into here with some hormone mix and then into some nice soil and leave it. And probably three or four months later that will have roots on it. it will, these will grow in containers, these can be taken inside in winter they like the shade, so there's no need to have them out in the sun all the time. And the, how big will they grow? Hydrangeas, we've got, probably would grow four, one, two, three, four metres high, which is 12 feet high. But I cut them down every single autumn. So this one here, that is three years old, will be cut right down to this level and it will grow again up next spring. So you don't have to be kind to them, you can chop them off with a chainsaw if you want to, they will grow again. They are hardy, they are fantastic in flower arranging. If you've never tried one, I'll show you what you can do with it. I'll use an old one here. That becomes an instant beginning of a bouquet. There's your handle. A lovely hydrangea, obviously not uh, one that's dry, sun damaged. That's how it feels, and now thread other flowers through it. You have an easy posy for a beginning florist, and when they've all the stems you've pushed down through like this, you can then wrap it up with a ribbon and tape, and you've got a really quick posy. So hydrangeas are fabulous for armatures, but they're also amazing just to have on a vase. See the green colour underneath there? You can also just use the florist. So you can cut the florist off here, take out the brown bit, and you're going to be left with these lovely green pieces there that you can use for basing any arrangement whatsoever to hide floral foam. So it started like that, it ends up like that, and you 
can't go wrong with them. I don't get Dahlias, they're back in fashion. They have been around for so long. Grandmothers loved dahlias and these dahlias are just awesome. They look fantastic in a garden but they are really good for picking as well and you get all sorts of lovely forms. Look at this beautiful pom-pom form here. Completely round, absolutely beautiful. And then you get the big, great big ones like this and spiky ones, all sorts of different colours, all different forms and they are fabulous as a cut flower. There is something you have to do with them though, you have to, when you cut them, immediately cut them and let them soak overnight in water. Look at that long stem, waiting for a beautiful design that's front facing. Once they're in water overnight, they will go in floral foam, but they much, much, much prefer staying in water in some sort of a test tube or flower file. How do you grow them? They like full sun. They like lots and lots of fertiliser on them, um, and they like to be put in the ground in very, very, very early spring, and all this growth is just over three months of summer. This garden is completely empty, for the rest of the year and then in go these big dahlia rhizomes, bury them into the ground and up will come these dahlias for flowering possibly for four months. Keep taking the dead heads off, it's called dead heading and it means whenever you find one that's already flowered just take it off so that it'll keep flowering and keep going for weeks and weeks and weeks. You can collect them from the Dahlia Society, they're all around the world to get all these different varieties and just keep adding to them every year. But yes, they do grow really well in buckets, so have a go with Dahlias. This is what happens to equisetum when in the middle of a drought and the fish pond that it grows in runs out of water. It simply collapses into this dried state. It can still be used because that is quite a beautiful form to use in a dried arrangement and you can dye it as well um, with any natural dry for natural materials. But it is coming away again and as the fish pond has water back in it and this is how you normally see equisetum. It's called tiger tail in some countries and what's fabulous about it is it's hollow down in the middle there. You can put wire down through there and then bend it into all sorts of fantastic shapes. The thing with it, as this shows, is it has to have wet feet. It just is a swamp plant that absolutely needs water. But you also need to contain it. So a bucket is perfect for this because if you don't contain it, it will take over the entire lawn. It is one of those plants in New Zealand anyway that just completely and utterly takes over. It comes out of the pond and carries on season. So be very careful with it. Put it in a place such as a pond with no holes or leaks or anything so it can be completely contained. What I'm going to do with this one is cut all these pieces out Join them, use an arrangement that I can tell is an everlasting arrangement and fill up the pond and then this, this will come back again. Equal season, really, really fabulous for flower arrangement. Japanese iris. It sounds like something that you actually wouldn't have even thought about, but I found it incredibly useful. It has a little white, beautiful flower, but the flower only lasts a day, so I'm not interested in the flower in it. I'm interested in this foliage. The foliage is beautiful and thick with this lovely line running down through it like that. Fabulous spike on it. Beautiful for line material, for horizontal work, for weaving work. It weaves, it's lovely and even and it also bends beautifully. You can bend it this way just like flax and it will give you the most beautiful curves. It grows up here under our fig tree and it doesn't seem to mind where it grows. It is very very hardy and it, this is an extremely dry part of the garden and it's just covered all of underneath this fig tree here. It is a fantastic resource because of this bending, because of its lovely form going up for weaving, 
It also is long, long lasting. This will outlast anything else in your arrangement, whether you're using floral foam or whether you're using water. They are so hardy, and if you could feel it, it feels tough. It feels as if it's not going anywhere. So that is Japanese iris. Agapenthus, they grow like weeds in New Zealand, but they are stunning in white or in blue. In Europe, you can pay up to six euros a head for them. And you know, once you see just how good they are, you'll understand why. Each of these beautiful little florets, just take one of those, and it's fabulous in floral jewellery. Add a bud, and you've got the most beautiful buttonhole for a groom. Fabulous things. Take the whole thing and just like with the hydrangea you've got the beginning of a bouquet. This is your armature and you thread things down through it to create a beautiful posy bouquet. Stunning things and then let's have a look what happens as they get older and now those seed pods are starting to arrive. The seed pods themselves are really really cool. Pull off the old spent petals and you've got a completely different look with all those gone. Now give the whole thing a haircut, take all those seeds off and you get this stunning star shape. Once again use it for a bouquet but oh what a cool thing to have in a really really modern design. After you've done this Agapanthus is still not finished because these little heads will dry to the most beautiful golden colour for dried arrangements. There it is, look at that. How quick was that to make this beautiful star shape? But wait, we have to say there's more. Now take the Agapanthus leaf. Cut it down low. It is the most versatile leaf. It's tough. You can bend it. You can even fold it over and make patterns to pin into shapes and things like this. It's very, very fleshy. It will last out of water for perhaps five days before it starts to yellow on the edges. But even that looks really, really cool if you're doing some layering work. That's the Agapanthus. It comes with an enormous big bulb, possibly this big. And once you've got them in New Zealand at least, they're very hard to dig out. So if you don't want them to spread because every one of these seeds will plant another one, put them somewhere that you can confine them unless your climate is so harsh that they're luxury things and exotic. Caprosma variegated, glorious yellow Caprosma. I just love this. It's on the border between us and our neighbour and you can see how much I've kept my side cut because I use it so often and I have to really stretch to get it from their side. They don't mind by the way. What is so fantastic about it is with everything that I grow it has to be something that lasts for ages but also it's the variation of this colour. You cut a piece off and it is a fantastic for layering. Pinning it onto something like that is amazing. And you can get Caprosma not only in this variegated yellow but dark greens and also beautiful brick colours, the terracotta colours, so, and with shiny, shiny leaves. It's easy to grow just like you saw me if you want to take a cutting. Just do this, take off as many leaves from the bottom as well leave a few on the top and cut across them so that they can still get the chlorophyll but they're not burning up too much. Cut it on an angle, dip it in hormone powder and you've got yourself a little cutting to keep it moist and you're going to have the caprosma that you've acquired from one of your favourite friends. Using it, I use it for basing, I use it to fill up a wreath before I add all the other colours to it. I use it if I'm making a, a concave bowl so that this is, gives those bright yellow pieces to it. And you'll see at the top here, these are these yellow pieces. This is new growth. Don't use it. It's spring growth. Even though in the middle of summer it's still growing and these don't last. So 
even though it's tempting to use that stunning yellow foliage, foliage don't stick to the old stuff because that's what's going to last. Fabulous and look how enormous it's grown because it hasn't had me chopping it back for 20 years or so. This is Camellia japonica. Japonica meaning it comes from Japan but it's really important you remember that as its name because this is the one that you want for flower arranging. It is this leaf that is going to last for so long for layering. This is the one that you can use to cover polystyrene, pin it to anything and it will last for months. It's an astonishing leaf to use. Camellias come in all sorts of stunning, stunning colours for the flower and if you pin the backs of the camellia flowers and you are going to end up be able to use the flowers as well as the leaves. They're a bit tricky. I made a DVD on how to arrange camellias so we won't go into it here. It's the leaves we're looking at and I've probably got seven or eight in this garden because every one of them's got a different shaped leaf. They grow very, very tall but you can keep cutting them back and so that they will keep small if you want them to. But there it is. It's a Camellia and it's Camellia japonica, not Camellia sasanqua. Get the right one. The bay tree, you wouldn't think that the bay tree was on my list. It grows enormously high. This one is in our kitchen garden and we keep it trimmed right across the top like a hedge. So it is possible to have it in a little garden. Why is it on my list? It's on my list because of its leaves. Also, I use it in cooking. So these leaves are hardy little tough leaves. They are fantastic for layering. They are really really good for filling up a bouquet at the back of the bouquet because when I trim the hedge I never throw them away. They're also really good in your pantry to keep away mosquitoes. That's what they say. It happens, hasn't happened for me. The other thing is as the bay tree gets a wee bit dry these beautiful yellow leaves arrive on it so it's giving me two different types of leaves and then there are these beautiful berries. Lovely shiny green berries. So it's very very versatile. I've been told that the flowers are poisonous so the flowers are insignificant anyway. Who's going to eat their flower arrangement? I'm not quite sure but Keep to the berries, keep to these, keep it well trimmed and the bay tree, which is actually a laurel, will be one of your favourites for cutting back and using its foliage. Lamb's ear, that beautiful, soft, gorgeous leaf. This is easy to grow all around the world. It is a ground cover. You can see it's just starting to brown off a wee bit because of the summer heat. When you pick it, pick the leaves and they are beautiful for layering. They are fantastic if you want that grey colour scheme which works so well with pastels. And you can pull up the whole plant and use it or you can just use the leaves. You only need to start with one. All of this started with just one tiny plant and it spreads. Not spreads the way you don't want it to spread but just keep planting it so you don't have to weed as much. This is my lavender hedge and I love it and so do the people I do flower arrangements for and it's because of these beautiful flower spikes. This smells divine and it flowers for most of the year. It is fabulous for outside in a little garden or in a bucket. Yes, it will work for anybody. Bring it inside, of course, if it's going to snow. There is a trick to lavender. If you pick these little ones here that are all soft, it won't last. When you pick the stem, you're looking for a really tough stem like this one. It feels tougher. It's not going to bend under my finger and when you cut it down to there it gives you a nice stalk. This lavender at certain times of the year will grow much much stronger. That bird really really wants to get in on this doesn't it? I use the lavender to create smell in bouquets and in my flower arrangements. I also use it because of its purple. This colour goes beautifully with all of the different pastels but to make it stand out more when you use it in arrangement don't just use it on its own, group it. 
Group it into threes or fives and you get not only a stronger smell, but you also get this wonderful, bigger presence. So that is the lavender. You, it grows easily. This whole hedge grew from one cutting and this is all you do. You take a piece of woody cutting, strip off the bottom leaves, leave enough for it to do its work, cut it short, put it in the hormone powder and plant it. If you did 10 or 12 of these, probably five of them will come and root and you will end up with all this beautiful free lavender. Of course there's lots of varieties. There's also beautiful pink ones, there's French lavender, there's English lavender. Lavender. This is the one that I choose. It's not the one that you use for making lavender oil but it's definitely the one to choose if you want it for flower arranging. Oh, the smell, even the leaves. Mm, yum! And then there's the dear old zinnia, a flower from way back. And when you touch them, they're hard. They're not soft, feminine little flowers, but do they last? They are amazing. You grow these from seed. I scatter them wherever I've got a spare bit of patch of ground, and the colors are always incredibly vibrant. Hot orange, hot pinks hot reds. These are the vibrant colours for party, party, party type arrangements. When you cut the flower on a zinnia here, or here, it will come away again from the two sides, so that you don't just get one flower per plant. The more you cut it, the more flowers you're going to get on it. So just sprinkle seed, it'll grow anywhere, it likes the heat, keep it watered, and you've got zinnias for summer. That's one of your summer flowers. Ivy, you thought I was going to miss Ivy out, didn't you? Ivy is one of the essentials if you are going to do traditional designs. What's very, very cool about this particular ivy is it has also got variegated sports coming off it. A sport is a natural mutation. So with this one, I'm going to cut a piece of the variegated off and I'm going to put that in a pot because I'm hoping that will carry on being that stunning variated colour. Ivy, obviously you can get these enormous big leaves here or will go tiny, but watch this here with Ivy. Once you've got it, you won't be able to get rid of it because it creeps everywhere. The best use I've seen of Ivy is as, as it's been planted in a container in a cone shape and wound all the way up it. Other than that you might have to do what we do and we get the hedge trimmer out and we give it a haircut, quite a severe haircut, so that it stays where we want it and not anywhere else. Ivy not only is for its leaves, it's also if you want a vine you take these leaves off and you end up with a beautiful supple vine that you can make into the beginning of a wreath shape, a heart shape for Valentine's Day. So it's not just the leaves of ivy, it's also just this bit here that is fabulous for manipulating in the shapes that you need to make a base of any sort. Every garden needs a grass or a reed. You might be able to grow spear grass or bear grass, which are the two very famous grasses that florists use all over the world and are easy to get. But I choose a native one. This is the reed that I use from choice. It is a native New Zealand sedge actually and it is fantastic because I can cut a bundle of it right down here and have all this to bundle up and use any way I like. It doesn't curve as well as bear grass and spear grass, but it will give me a slight curve on it. Just, I probably need three or four. You can see where I've cut it down. It likes wet conditions. I really use it a lot. And it not only is great for making into these lovely curly shapes for uh, flower arranging, it's also fantastic for creating beautiful enclosed spaces. Now this one likes to crack, but there immediately, as you've got, 
a fabulous start to an enclosed space. Check out a native grass in your area or an easy to grow a sedge or reed in your area and put those in your garden. Not only are they beautifully st structured to contrast with everything else around it, but they are really, really useful fillers and, l and linear material. That's what you're looking for. Nandina. Nandina is a tough little shrub and it changes colour. If you buy it, remember to get one that is red. When it, this winter it goes red with frost, which is stunning, and now it's the middle of summer and it's been sun ripened, I'm going to call it, and it turns this glorious, beautiful red orange, always with these lovely lime green leaves. It doesn't grow as fast as I need it, so I've got lots and lots of them in the garden. All I do is I cut it here and plant it again, and that will grow. But let's have a look at what's really cool about Nandina. It grows like a little umbrella, with one stalk coming off and dividing into that many, many stalks. This is really fast basing material. If you're using a wreath or you have to cover lots of floral foam, it means you're only putting one piece into the floral foam, but it's covering that whole area. It's absolutely fabulous for that. But I've also, in one of my madder moments, used it for layering, cutting off every single one of these and pinning them because Nandina is an everlasting foliage. In fact, I have never seen it dry up and die. It simply sits there for years and years and years and it keeps its colour, which is amazing if you're doing dried flower work or you want something for a wall hanging. This is the thing to have. It's Nandina. It's a tiny wee shrub. It does come in several colours, but if you want this sort of display of colours, make sure you get the red one. Conifer. You know, you could grow 20 different sorts of conifer. They go from stunning blue greys right through greens, right through to those yellows. And every one of them you can use in your flower arranging. Fantastic at Christmas time, of course. The smell is Christmas. The cones are amazing. Every conifer has a different shaped cone. And this one is particularly amazing because it grows flat. I'll cut a piece off and show you. Flat. Now, that is incredible for horizontal designs. It's incredible for wreaths because you can go round and round and round and round and it's all beautifully flat. Conifer will not grow from cones or that that I know of for a home gardener and they are really, really slow growing. That has grown that tall in 10 years, but some of them grow much faster than some of them slower. And when you pick from a conifer, they don't grow back where you pick them from. So be really discreet with your picking and make sure you pick it like you saw me there from a place that when you've picked it, it closes up and it disappears because they are very unforgiving. But if I pick this whole piece here, it would never grow back. Believe it or not, the fruit trees on our property are just as important for eating those glorious plums and cherries and apples as they are for flower arranging because fruit trees need to be pruned every year and those prunings give me the perfect excuse to take off the leaves, look at that beautiful bark and create modern European style designs. So those fruit trees are my source of all of the sticks and twigs I use when I want to make sticky wreaths or long designs that have got tatami fencing and wiring all around them. So don't just think things for flower arranging, also think of other resources that if you're going to put them in the garden have got two uses. You can eat them, you can cut them down. Perfect. And the newest addition to the garden is the roses. This is a rose walk. I bought 10 roses. When I went to the grower I said to him, there's only two things that these roses need to have. They need to be long lasting as a cut flower and they have to have a smell. I said I don't mind about the colour but those two things are essential. So these are bush roses and there's all sorts of different varieties in here and this is their very very first year. I don't have enormous amount of time to cultivate finicky plants 
so these plants had to be hardy as well because if they're not hardy they're going to die that's the end of the story really they will grow much taller so that will eventually have a rose walk going right through so think about roses they are easy care if you have healthy plants now the ones that come from a grower are hothouse roses they're very different they will last longer but these ones give you the variety that you won't get if you buy them succulents I have to admit I used to hate succulents until a florist told me she had them growing all up her drive I don't like that desert look but we've all got our own tastes but I've got to tell you succulents are the thing to have if there are no flowers about in the garden because you take one of those it suddenly becomes the most beautiful flower shape succulents come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and they are so easy to grow have a look at this I was given these and there's the stalk on it there so when I want it in arrangement, I just pull this whole, whole thing out, put a toothpick in there and put in the arrangement. If I get the arrangement back, if it's for my corporates, I then stick it back in the succulent bed. Here's one here. That's been in an arrangement and it's growing all of these little roots while it was in the floral foam. And then all I have to do is put it straight back in here and those roots will go back into the ground and it will keep it alive. It's the ultimate everlasting flower. I've got quite a collection and I just sneak them into little parts of the garden that's particularly dry and go and raid them whenever I want them. It's the wrong time of the year for some of my most precious flowers and this is all you can see in late summer because these are my bulbs and there are four flowers I just have to grow that come up in spring that are fantastic as cut flowers in water for flower arranging. So that's four at once we're doing. The first one is the ranuncular. They are so easy to grow. You take the little tiny odd looking piece of root. This has just been pulled out of the ground a few months ago. You plant it and miraculously within two months, eight weeks, this is what you've got these beautiful ranunculus now i take them out of the ground and i will plant them again in autumn and every year they will double so this is how it's come out of the ground this one and you can see if i well, when i plant that this had three flower stalks on it when i plant it i will probably get six more so every year they double how many you get with ranunculus keep cutting them keep cutting them the more you cut them the more you're going to get they will last in water for four or five days they're not long lasting but they are stunning for spring the other spring flowers are ornithogalums ornithogalums are those beautiful white flowers now they will last three weeks i've tested them on my corporate clients last, this last spring three weeks in water they will last they are the most astonishing things because they open and open and open starting at the bottom and going up to the top the other bulbs you need gladioli put in the gladioli a big corm and just like the other two you'll end up with two next year and four the year after a stunning stunning thing so it's daffodils just spring bulbs this is the four bulbs that I plant every single year and it's just essential for me so I can take it to my corporate clients and say spring has arrived now if you plant them all at the same time in a plot they will not flower at the same time the first thing to appear will be the daffodils then you'll have the ranunculus then you'll have the ornithoglans and then you'll have the gladioli so you can plant them all at the same time but they will come up at different so that that spot of land will always look glorious and doesn't it look glorious just love my spring bulbs plant them in a bucket of course you can magnolia grandiflora is an astonishing tree it does grow about 80 feet 25 meters high so it'd be impossible in my garden but there is a small variety it's this one here which is petite and i have just hugged it in amongst the the elm it gets 
probably a little less sunlight that it would really really like but it is keeping it small which is essential there is something fantastic about the leaf on this tree and there it is stunning shining beautiful leaf ah completely brown on the other side and it's not a fairy brown that is a stuck on brown and that's what makes this tree so exciting if you can get the petite one or if you've got an enormous big garden and you can have the whole big one this leaf will last forever and I do mean forever I covered a sphere with this leaf probably eight years ago and it's still going strong this leaf it doesn't get brittle it doesn't shrink you can chop it up like this and use it in all sorts of layered designs it is fantastic in a bouquet start your bouquet off by cutting three or four of these putting them together and then threading your flowers through it is a stunning stunning evergreen tree that if you can see if you can find one you're going to have to get it from the nursery they can't propagate it yourself they are too big and grunty to do that too it doesn't grow from seed I have no idea how the nurseries do it that's to be honest but see if you can find one or the, the big one or the small variety and get it into your garden it's going to be absolutely perfect for all the flower arranging you want to do you're going to laugh when you see this one because that is my holly tree and that is my hand it is a cutting that I took I was given some holly last year to put in the Christmas wreaths and I took a cutting of it so it's been sitting there now for six months and I'm really pleased because if you look there it's got two tiny tiny new leaves on it yes so that is my baby holly it is going to grow quite slowly but in a couple of years time I will be able to pick my own holly just because I want it for Christmas I want those red berries I want the big green glossy leaves and so see if you can add holly to your repertoire in your garden I've got a plant that you can't see in summer because it's covered by the sunflowers and the elderberries it's one of my everlasting flowers it is an astonishing plant I always thought it was an annual but it isn't yay it's a perennial it comes up year after year after year and I've grown it from seed I've got all the different colors and can, you might be able to hear it it's quite papery now that beautiful little thing will last for a couple of years before it loses its color I always put in water when I start but look at the colors that it can give you this incredible hot pink now these have been out of water for probably two months and that hot pink is being retained there's also a beautiful white one and so every year now I'm going to get these all the way through summer and they will make anything look brighter as you tuck them in see they come like this so you can actually so you can have them as small little stalks and tiny little arrangements or they will grow long stalks so you can have them in big traditional designs so that's my everlasting flowers there's another one that's also there called the straw flower it's the wrong time of the year for it but either this one or the straw flower both well worth growing from seed because they're going to reward you for so long for dried arrangements for wall hangings as well as for fresh flowers so two types of dry flowers two types of what we would call everlasting flowers that are well worthwhile and then we go to seed heads I will sometimes grow a flower just for its seed head and there are two here that are my favorites the first one are poppy seed heads the poppies themselves are beautiful they are a double pink and they come out but only for a couple of days I would never pick them as a cut flower but then after the petals have fallen off these beautiful green seed heads arrive and within a couple of weeks they have dried to this color if you don't tie your poppies up they will also bend towards the light so you get all these beautiful little bendy curly bits that are fantastic for dried flower arrangement but while they're green they are really really impressive and add another texture to an arrangement that is all fresh and of course you have a lovely show you just sprinkle the seeds on the ground up will come the poppies in spring lovely lovely pretty pretty don't pick them and wait for the reward the other seed head I absolutely love is anything that is a member of the alien family this one is off a leek 
but you could get them off onions. You can get them off giant aliens and you can either eat the leek or eat the onion or leave it completely to go to seed like this. Now this has been in a vase for six weeks. It's only just now starting to flop. If you do plant them to use, keep one, don't pick it so that all these little seeds develop. Just plant them and you'll have a mass of them for next year. They are a fantastic form, amazing form. They are so wonderful and lasting and it just, they're pom-poms. They create wonderful swirling designs and add that special roundness if you've got a great big linear design. So it's the alien family, any of them at all, make yourself some natural pom-poms. Olive leaves. Now, I have never used olive leaves in arrangement ever. The olive trees have been there for these delightful little things that are fattening up for another couple of months to make the olives that we pickle. But then a bride came to me last week and with a bouquet she wanted that she'd seen from overseas and lo and behold, it's got olive leaves in it. And I'm going, or olive branches I suppose, and I'm thinking that's so logical. Every year we trim this tree so that it's at a height that we can get to to pick the olives, which means all of these long pieces here are going to be cut off. Now the wedding I'm doing this is actually in a week's time, so this is going to be part of her bouquet. She wants these grey sort of leaves with the maroon, and I'm going, oh okay, that's a really, really good idea. Now it's well past spring, so they won't sag, so it's doing two things at once. It's trimming our olive trees, it's, and it's pleasing the bride. So I'm really quite excited about use, using these, but there's no way she's going to get branches with my olives on because it's a really ba bad harvest this year. So even if I only get one jar of them, they're precious. Now the olive trees themselves are Mediterranean, let's be honest, you're not going to grow these um, if you have snow unless you've got a conservatory and you can put them inside where it's heated with the rest of your house. And But hey, that's quite a good idea, isn't it? Because then you've got a bonus. You can have yourself some olives, you can have some olive branches, you can say I live in the middle of the snow and it's three feet deep outside, but have you seen my olive trees? It's quite a good idea. I first saw Ming fern being used as a base material when I was in London and I had never seen it before. So imagine my surprise when I came to Floral Design Magazine Garden for the first time and there I saw it growing. Now when I first used it it was fantastic because you cut all these little pieces off here like little trees. You put that into floral foam and it's a very quick base particularly for wreaths and things like that. The problem with it that I find is that after three or four days all these little needles fall off it. Why have I put it in my essentials? Because it is obviously easy to find in the northern hemisphere. It is a very quick way of covering floral foam. It's a beautiful green colour and if you can grow it even better. We chop ours down hideously because it does tend to have to put out two metre long fronds on it but and that's why you can see bits of there looking a bit dead on it but that is because we do chop it down. We're very mean to our Ming fern but it is beautiful, it's lovely and soft and it's going to give any arrangement you've got a fantastic green, even a lime green as they get older. And to finish I'm going to put a whole heap together and I'm going to call them the lilies. Asiatic lilies like this one that's just finished. Oriental lilies, one that's not even a lily called Gloriosa. Then the Aram lilies and the Elfin lilies and the ones that we called Naked Ladies. All these fantastic lilies, they'll pop up from bulbs at any stage of the year where they're ready. They will grow enormous, you'll be rewarded with some beautiful lilies in all sorts of shapes and the Oriental ones of course smell and that's going to give you flowers, statuesque, beautiful flowers, calla lilies, I even forgot those, Xantadesia. All right, so think big bulbs that are lilies of all those different sorts, even the ones that aren't, put them in the ground, wait for them to come up and just pick them to your heart's content because they do last, they are bold, they are beautiful and they do deserve a place in my 40 essential fundamental plants for floral design.